Welcome to Railway Legends, Myths, and Stories. I'm Kevin Stanley. We here at RLMS have tried to do our best to bring you both interesting and accurate information. On occasion, we have made some mistakes. We will do our best to both point these out and, if we can, correct them. We appreciate the comments we have received and the help offered to us to get things right. In this episode, I want to take another look at the venerable locomotive John Bull. We have already done a video about this legendary locomotive, but in our research we have come across a few more, we hope, interesting facts about this early locomotive. So let's start with how the bowl was built, and more specifically at the bowl's wheel arrangement. What we are doing is a bit of nitpicking about its white numbers. For more on the white system, Look at our video, Types of Steam Locomotives, to which we'll leave a link in the description. So using the white system, the John Bull, as delivered to the Camden and Amboy from Robert Stevenson and Company, was an 040. Here's a diagram of a similar locomotive built around the same time. This means there are zero leading wheels, four driving wheels, and zero trailing wheels. All of the weight is on the main drive wheels. We and many others have noted that most early British locomotives had a bad time with rustic American track. A short time after entering service, the John Bull had a bad derailment and people were killed. So what was to be done? The engineers at the Camden and Amboy Railroad reworked the engine to give it a front set of pilot wheels. These wheels did a good job of keeping the bull on track. This innovation led to the widespread use of front bogies to lead locomotives through curves. If you have watched our explanation of the white notation and you look at the John Bull, you might easily say, ah, it was an 040 and now it is a 240. We here at RLMS made that mistake as well. So now you're going to hear the rest of the story. This locomotive was built with the cylinders placed under the locomotive. What very few people realize is that the pistons were hooked to a crank on the rear pair of driving wheels. Then, through a set of outside cranks and through connecting arms, the power was transmitted to the front set of driving wheels. This is a picture of a similar locomotive. You can see how the connecting rods may have looked. This picture comes from John H. White Jr.'s book, a History of the American Locomotive, its development, 1830 to 1880. By the way, John H. White has nothing to do with the white system of locomotive description. On page 255, figure 91, this image is described as the reconstruction shows the John Bull as built by Robert Stevenson in June 1831. The odd thing is that the John Bull in all photos and paintings show the springs above the main frame as well as a different arrangement of the steam dome. The picture from the John White book is most likely from another similar locomotive, not the John Bull. Still, this diagram does a good job of showing how the crank and connecting rods probably looked when the John Bull came out of the Robert Stevenson and Company works. There is some information that says the side rods were removed early on as there was a belief that they added to the bull's problems with staying on track through curves. If the John Bull had been run with the connecting rods removed, the locomotive would have been a 220, with the two leading wheels not being driven, then two driving wheels and zero trailing wheels. But this is not the end of the story. Now to how the bull was changed a true leading truck was needed. The easiest place to mount the two heavy wood beams that ran to the front set of small guide wheels was to attach these beams by a pair of bearings. These were attached to where the crank and connecting rod had been. So this is how things now stand. There are now two small leading wheels on the front beams, then two more large undriven wheels. That's right, the front pair of large wheels are no longer drive wheels. They simply hold the locomotive up. So what am I getting at? 
Well, the John Bull, as seen in all these pictures, is not a 2-4-0, but is in fact a 4-2-0. Four, four front unpowered wheels, two drive wheels, and zero trailing wheels. The new front wheels did their job to keep the locomotive on the rails. While now having only two drive wheels reduced the tractive effort, being able to stay on track was well worth it. Now to a bit more of the history of this innovative and historic locomotive. In 1893, the Pennsylvania Railroad took the John Bull to their workshops in Jersey City, New Jersey. There, it underwent a partial restoration, bringing it to full operating condition. The PRR had big plans for the grand old locomotive. A set of very old passenger cars were found and all was made ready for a trip from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania to Chicago, Illinois for the train's display at the World's Columbian Exposition on the shores of Lake Michigan. The special train departed the railroad's Jersey City Station on the 17th of April, 1893, reaching the Chicago World's Fair site on the 22nd of April. During the trip, many dignitaries and representatives of the press were on hand to ride parts of the trip. On one segment, no less than the President of the United States, Grover Cleveland, was a passenger. The trip took the old locomotive a bit longer than other regularly scheduled trains at that time, of course. As old as the bull was, it was best to keep the speeds fairly low. It was still an outstanding and amazing trip for the John Bull. Once again, we have to take our hats off to the engine, as more than 60 years after it was built, it made the trip under its own steam. A grand locomotive indeed. We hope you liked this bit of rail trivia. And as always, we'll see you on the train, however many drive wheels the locomotive has.